Okay, we're back here live in New York City for Big Data Week. This is SiliconAngle.tv's exclusive coverage of Hadoop World, Strata Plus Hadoop World, big event, Big Data Week. Uh, we just wrote a blog post on SiliconAngle.com calling this the South by Southwest for Data Geeks. And, and um, it's my prediction that this is going to turn into a <coughs> quite the geek fest. Uh, obviously, the crowd here is enormous, packed, and uh, an amazing event. And uh, we're excited. This is SiliconAngle.com. I'm the founder, John Furrier. I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, where people go for free research and peers collaborate to solve problems. And we're here with Jack Norris, who's the Vice President of Mark Marketing at MapR a company that we've been tracking for, s for quite some time. Jack, welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you, Dave. I got to hand it to you. You know, we met quite a while ago now, it was well over a year ago, and we were pushing at you guys and saying, well, you know, open source and that. Said, Look, we're solving problems for customers. We got the right model, we think. You know, this, yep. is, this is our strategy. We're sticking to it. And watch what happens. And like I said, I have to hand it to you. You guys are really have some great traction in the market. You're doing what you said. And so congratulations on that. I know you got a lot more work to do, but way yeah. to go. Yeah, and actually the, the Topic of openness is one that's that's pretty interesting, um, and uh, you know if you look at the different options out there, all of them are combining open source with some proprietary. Uh, now, <coughs> in the case of some distributions, it's very small, like an ODBC driver with a proprietary um, driver, um, but I think it represents that that any solution combining to make it more open is is important so what we've done is make innovations but while we've made those innovations we've opened up and provided apis like nfs for standard access like rest like mm -hmm. uh odbc drivers etc yes. so so it's a spectrum i mean actually we were at oracle open world a few weeks ago and uh, you know you listen to larry ellison talk about the oracle public cloud and makes it actually a very strong case <laughs> that it's open you can move data it's all java so it's all about the standards yeah and uh yeah you know, absolutely. It, it, it from an open standpoint, but it's really all about the business value. That's yep. that's what the bottom line is. So, uh, we had your CEO John Schroeder on yesterday. Uh, John and I both were very impressed with um, essentially what he described as your philosophy of <laughs> we we announce a product when we have we have customers when we announce that product, and um, you know, that's impressive. And then he was also giving some good feedback to startup entrepreneurs out there who are obviously there's a lot of uh, action going on with the startup community, and he said the same thing: get customers. And that's it. That's all. And use your tech, but don't be so locked into the tech. Get the customers to understand the needs and then deliver that. So you guys have done great. And uh, I want to talk about the, the show here, okay? Because uh, you guys are um, have a big booth and big presence here at the show. What what have you guys are learning? Obviously, how's the positioning? How's the new M7 news hitting? Give us the quick update. So uh, a lot of news. Uh, first started uh, on Tuesday where we announced the M7 edition, mm -hmm. and. Uh, yeah, I brought a demo here for me, uh, for you all, uh, because the, the big thing about M7 is what we don't have. So uh, yeah. <laughs> we're not demoing region servers, we're not demoing compactions, uh, we're not demoing a lot of uh, manual administration, uh, administrative tasks. So what that, <coughs> what that really means is that we took the stack, and if you look at HBase, um, <coughs> HBase today has about half of Hadoop users uh, adopting HBase. So it's a lot of momentum in the market uh, and you know, used for everything from real-time analytics to kind of lightweight OLTP processing. <coughs> but it's an infrastructure that sits on top of a JVM that stores its data in the Hadoop distributed file system that sits on a JVM that stores its data in a Linux file system that writes to disk. And so a lot of the complexity is that stack. And so as an administrator, you have to worry about how data gets, uh, uh, you know, kind of basically written across that. And you've got region servers to keep up. Uh, when you're doing kind of writes, you have things called compactions, which increase response time. So it's a, it's a complex environment. And we've spent quite a bit of time in, in collapsing that infrastructure and with the M7 edition, you've got files and tables together in the same layer writing directly to disk. So there's no region servers, uh, there's no compactions to deal with, there's no pre-splitting of tables and trying to do manual merges. It just makes it much, much simpler. Let's talk about some of your customers in terms of um, the profile of these guys. Are th uh, I'm assuming, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you're not selling to the tire kickers. You're selling to the guys who actually have some experience with, with Hadoop. Mm -hmm. 
and have run into some of the limitations, and you come in and say, hey, we can solve some of those problems. Yeah. Is, that, yeah. is, that, is that right? Can yeah, you talk that about that a little that bit? That's a pretty good characterization. I think part of it is when you're in the evaluation process and when you first uh, hear about Hadoop, it's kind of like the Gartner hype curve. Right, and uh, you know this stuff. It does everything, and uh, of course you got data protection because you've got things <laughs> replicated across a cluster, and uh, of course you got scalability because you can just add nodes and you know so forth. Well, once you start using it, you realize that yes, I've got data replicated across a cluster, but if I accidentally delete something or if I've got some uh, corruption, that's replicated across the cluster too. So things like snapshots are really important so you can return to, you know, what was it five minutes before? Uh, you know, performance where you can get the most out of your hardware, um, you know, ease of administration where I can cut this up into, into logical volumes and, and have policies at that whole level instead of it in individual files. So there's a, there's a bunch of features that really resonate with users after they've had some experience. And those tend to be our um, you know, our, our kind of key customers. There's, a, there's another phase too, which is when you're testing Hadoop, you're looking at what's possible with this platform. Wh what type of analytics can I do? When you go into production, now all of a sudden you're looking at how does this fit in with my SLAs? How does this fit in with my data protection uh, policies? You know, how do I integrate with my different data sources? And can I leverage existing code? You know, we had one customer um, you know, large kind of uh, systems integrator for the federal government, they have a million lines of code that they were told to rewrite to run with other distributions that they could use just out of the box with MapR. So um, let's talk about some of those customers. Can you name yeah. some names and get, get sure. specific? Sure, so um, actually I'll, I'll, I'll talk with, uh, we had a keynote today and uh, we had this beautiful customer video that we had to cut because of time. So it's running <laughs> in our booth <laughs> and it's uh, streaming on our website and I think we've got a uh, actually, some of the bumper here we kind of inserted. So, um, but I want to shout out to those because th they ended up in the cutting room floor. Yeah, it's good. We've actually keynote. been running it here. Yeah. yeah so uh, one was Rubicon Project, yeah. and um, they're they're an interesting uh, company. They're a real time advertising platform, ad auction network. They recently passed uh, Google in terms of number one ad reach, as mentioned by Comscore, uh, and a lot of press on that. Um, I particularly like the headline that mentioned those three companies because uh, it was measured by Comscore and Comscore They're is a too, map right? our customer <laughs> and, and Google's a key partner and uh, yesterday we announced a world record uh, for the Hadoop Terrasort running on, running on Google. So um, M7 for Rubicon, it allows them to address and replace different point solutions that were running alongside of Hadoop and uh, you know it simplifies their or potentially simplifies their architecture because now they have more things done with a single platform, increases performance, simplifies <laughs> administration. Um, another customer is Ancestry.com, who uh, you know, maybe you've seen their ads or heard uh, some of their radio sure. spots. Yep. Um, they're, they do a tremendous amount of, of data processing to you know, help family services and, and genealogy and figure out you know, family background. One of the things they do is is DNA testing. Uh, so for an internet service to be that advanced technology is pretty impressive. And uh, you, know, you send them, it's you know, $99, I believe, and they'll send you a DNA kit. You spit in the tube, you send it back, and then they process that and match and give you insights into your family background. So for them, simplifying HBase meant additional performance so they could do matches faster and really simplified administration. Uh, so, you know, in, in Melinda Graham's words, uh, you know, it's simpler because they're just not there, those, those components. Jack, I want to ask you about enterprise grade Hadoop because, um, yeah, and then uh, Ted Dunning, because he was, he was mentioned by Tim Estes on his keynote speech. So, so you have some rock stars in, in the company house, this management team. We had your CEO, and we've interviewed MC Shrevis and at yeah. uh, Google I.O., and we were on a panel together. So I have to know your team, solid team. Uh, so we'll talk about uh, Ted in a minute, but I want to ask you about the enterprise grade Hadoop conversation. Yeah. Yeah. What does that mean now? I mean, obviously you guys were very successful at first. Again, we were skeptics at first, but now your traction and your performance has proven there's, there's a market yep. um, and for that kind of platform. 
What does that mean now in this, in, uh, at this event today as this is evolving, as Hadoop the ecosystem is not just Hadoop anymore, it's other things? Yeah, there's, there's, there's three dimensions to enterprise grade. Um, the first is, is ease of use, and ease of use from an administrator standpoint, how easy does it integrate into an existing environment? How easy does it, does it fit into my, my IT policies? You know, do you run in a lights out data center? Does the uh, Hadoop distribution fit into that? So that's that's one, you know, whole dimension. Um, a key to that is is you know complete NFS support, so it it functions like uh, you know like standard storage. Uh, a second dimension is on dependability, reliability. So it's not just you know do you have a checkbox HA feature? It's do you have automated stateful failover? Do you have self healing? Can you handle multiple uh, uh, failures and and you know automated recovery. So, you know, in a lights out data center, can you actually go there once a week uh, and then just you know replace drives? And a great example of that is one of our customers had a test cluster with with Mapbar. It was a POC. Went on and did other things. They had a power failure. They came back a week later, and the cluster was up and running. And they hadn't done any manual uh, tests there, and they were they were just blown away the the recovery process for the other distribution is a long laundry list of uh, so I gotta ask you I gotta ask wait, wait, you what's the third one what's the third one third one is performance oh, okay um, and performance is is you know kind of raw speed it's also how do you leverage the infrastructure can you take advantage of of the network infrastructure multiple NICs can you take advantage of heterogeneous hardware can you you know mix and match for different workloads and it's really about sharing a cluster for different use cases and and different users, and there's a lot of features there. It's not just raw. So speed. ease of use, fitting into the existing IT infrastructure policies, the whole the whole, what happens when something goes wrong? Can you automate that? And then easy, speed, easy, dependable, fast, and, and speed with the same diversity. Thing, yeah, okay. making HBase uh, easy, dependable, right. fast with M7. So the talk of the show right now, you had the keynote this morning, is that you Mapar Marketing has dropped the uh, big data term. I'm going with data cosm. <laughs> is that true? <laughs> is that true? So Joe Hellerstein just had a tweet. Joe, um, famous uh, Cal Berkeley professor, computer science professor, now is CEO of a startup. Um, uh, what's the name of the startup? Trifecta. They're doing he had a good couple epic Trifecta. tweets this week, so shout out to Joe Hellerstein. But Joe Hellerstein's tweet just says, MapR Marketing has decided to drop the term big data and go with data cosm with a shout out to George Gilder. So I'm kind of like a little intellectual yeah. kind of humor. Yeah. So what, is that, what, what's, what's your response to that? Is it true? What's happening? What, what is, uh, you're the are you a VP of marketing? Yeah, what, well, what? The, if, if you look at the big data term, I, I think, you know, the, there's a lot of big data washing going on where, um, you know, architectures that have been out there for 30 years are, you know, all about big data. Uh, so I think there's a, uh, there, there's the need for a more descriptive term. Um, the, the purpose of data cosm was not to try to coin something or try to you know change a big data label. It was just to get people to take a step back and think, and to realize that we are in a massive paradigm shift. And you know, with a shout out to George Gilder, acknowledging you know he recognized what the impact of of making available compute mm -hmm. uh, meant. He recognized with telecosm Network, what yeah. what bandwidth would mean. And if you look at the combination of we've got all this this uh, compute efficiency and bandwidth, now Datacosm is, is basically taking those resources and unleashing it and changing the way we do things. And um, I think, I think w one of the ways to look at that is the new things that will be possible. And there's been a lot of focus on you know, SQL interfaces on top of, of Hadoop, which are important, but I think some of the more interesting use cases are taking this machine-generated data that's being produced very, very rapidly and having automated operational analytics that can respond in a very fast time to change how you do business, either how you're communicating with customers, um, how you're responding to, to different uh, uh, risk uh, factors in the environment for fraud, et cetera or uh, just increasing and, and improving um, 
uh, your response time to kind of cost it then. Yeah, also, Bobby Mehta earlier called it, he called it actionable insight, then he said assigning intent, you know, be able to respond. Well, it's interesting you know, that you quickly. talk about the George Gilbert because we like to kind of riff and get into the, uh, the concept, the abstract concepts, but he also was very big in supply side economics. And so yeah. if you look at the business value conversation, one of the things we pointed out uh, yesterday and, we, and this morning's uh, opening um, review was, you know, the, the top conversations insight and analytics. You know, yep. as a killer app right now, the app market has not developed, yep. and that's why we like companies like Continuity and what you guys are doing. You, uh, under the hood is being worked on, right? At many levels, performance, you mentioned those three things, but you know, analytics is a no-brainer, insight. But the other one's business value. Yep. So when you look at that kind of data cosm, I can see where you're going with that, um, and that's kind of what people want, because it's not so much like, I'm Republican, because he's Republican, George Gilder, and he bought American Spectator, everyone knows that. So, yep. so you know, obviously he's a Republican, but politics aside, the business side of what big data is implementing is massive. Yep. Now, I guess that's a Republican <laughs> concept, um, uh, but not really. I mean, business is, is, uh, is uh, all parties. So relative to data cosm, I mean, no one talks about e-business anymore. We're talking to IBM at the IBM conference, and they were saying, hey, that was a great marketing campaign, but no one says, hey, uh, are you in e-business today? <laughs> so we think that big data is going to have the same effect, which is, hey, are you, do you have big data? No, it's just assumed. Yeah. So yeah. That, that's what you're basically trying to establish, that it's not just about big data. Yeah, let, let, let me give you one small example um, from a business value standpoint. And uh, Ted Dunning, you mentioned Ted earlier, chief application architect, um, and one of the co-authors of, of uh, the book Mahout, which deals with machine learning. Uh, he dealt with one of our large financial services uh, companies. And uh, you know, one of the techniques on Hadoop is, is clustering. Uh, you know, K nearest neighbors, uh, you know, different algorithms. And they looked at a particular process and they sped up that process by 30,000 times. So there's a blog post uh, that's on our website. You can find out, you know, additional information on that. And I on, on this on this one point on this on this one point. But I think, you know, to your point about business value and you know what does data cosm really mean? That's an incredible speed up uh, in terms of of performance, and it changes how companies can react in real time. It changes how they can do pattern recognition. And Google did a, a really interesting paper called the unreasonable effectiveness of data. And in there they say simple algorithms on big data, on mass amounts of data, beat a complex model every time. And so I think what we'll see is a movement away from data sampling and trying to do an 80-20 to looking at, at all your data and identifying where are the exceptions that we want to increase because they're you know, revenue exceptions or that we want to address because it's a, a cost or a, a fraud issue. Well, that's what I, I would give a shout out to, uh, um, to the guys at Digital Reasoning. Tim Estes, I uh, plugged uh, Ted, it was idolized him in terms of his work, obviously his work is uh, awesome. But two, he brought up this concept of the understanding gap and he showed an interesting chart in his keynote, which was the data explosion, you know, it's up and you know straight yes. up, right? It's yes. massive amount of data, 64% unstructured by his calculation. Then he showed a, a flat line called attention. So as data's been exploding over time, going up, attention, I mean user attention, is flat with some uptick maybe. But so users and humans, yes. they can't expand their mind fast enough. So machine learning, um, technologies have yep. to bridge that gap. That's analytics, that's insight. Yep. Yep. And, and, and you know, there's a big conversation now going on about more data or better models. People trying to squint through some of the comments that Google made and say, all right, does that mean we, we just throw out the models? Yeah, data trumps algorithms. Data trumps algorithms. But, but the question I have is, do you think, and your customers talking about, okay, well now they have more data, can I actually develop better algorithms that are simpler, well, and yeah, you know, is it a virtuous <coughs> cycle? Or yeah, it's, I, I think, I mean, uh, there, are the, there, there are a lot of debate here, a lot of information, but I think one of the, one of the interesting things is, given that compute cycle, given the, you know, kind of that compute efficiency that we have, and given the bandwidth, you can take a model and then iterate very quickly on it, and kind of arrive at, at insight. And in the past, it was just the, that amount of data and that amount of time to process, okay, that could take me 40 days to get to the point where you can do now in hours. Right, right, so I mean, the, the great example is fraud detection. Yep. Right, so we used to sample six months later, hey, your credit card might have been hacked, and now it's, you know, you get a phone call, you know, or you can't use your credit card, or That's whatever it. it is, and so, uh, but there's still a lot of use cases where, you know, 
weather is an example <laughs> where mo modeling and better modeling would be <laughs> very helpful. But, uh, excellent. So, um, so data custom, are you planning other you know, marketing initiatives around that? Or is this sort of tongue in cheek fun, throw it out there, a little red meat into the, to the uh, chum in the waters, as John you know, says? You know, what really <laughs> motivated us was, um, you know, the Cube's here talking, you know, for the whole day. What could we possibly do to help give them a topic of conversation? Fantastic, yeah, thank okay, you. Okay, Data that. Cosm is now <laughs> it. <laughs> of course, we found that on our proprietary HBase tool, <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Norris, thanks for coming in. We appreciate your support. You guys have been great. We've been following you and continue to follow you. have been a great supporter of the Cube. I want to thank you personally while we're here. Uh, MapR has been generous underwriter supports of our great independent editorial. I want to recognize you guys. Thanks for your support, and we continue to look forward to watching you guys grow and kick ass. So thanks for all your support, and uh, we'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Thank you. <laughs> thanks, Jack. <laughs> Years ago, the video news business believed the internet was a fad. The science is settled. We all know the internet is here to stay. Bubbles and busts come and go, but the industry deserves a news team that goes the distance. Coming up on Social Angle are some interesting new metrics for measuring the worth of a customer on the web. What Every morning, we're on the air to bring you the most up-to-date information on the tech industry with scrutiny on releases of the day and news of industry-wide trends. We're here daily with breaking analysis from the best minds in the business. Join me, Kristen Folletti, daily at the news desk on SiliconANGLE TV, your reference point for tech innovation. Eighteen months ago, we.